All right, what's up guys? It's Apollo here and welcome back to another glorious Rome 2 siege battle Now I am gonna be showing you some amazing Rome Gameplay all right not I know that sounds weird, but Rome the faction I'm playing as Rome Obviously, this is Rome 2 gameplay uh, but you know, because I'm the Siege Master in this, I am the greatest! No, I'm just kidding. I'm not the greatest player by, not even close. Uh, but I'm going to be showing you some pretty cool Rome gameplay because oftentimes when I upload battles that has the faction Rome in it, the players tend to be new and they're not amazing. And, you know, oftentimes new players want to play as Rome because it's, well, Rome. Who doesn't love Rome? They're very strong, very powerful. So you're going to see, uh, I think, I think some decent gameplay. Is it enough to win the battle? We'll find out. Let's jump in. So sit back, relax, and, excuse me, words are hard. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the siege. Don't forget your snacks and drinks. And, of course, to lay siege to the like button. And you can support the channel by uh, looking in the video description. There's a link to my t-shirt store and also displate metal posters. So let's look out the... Oh, Okay, there we go. Let's look at the factions. It didn't work. That was weird. Uh, so we've got Galatia over here who's attacking with Arverni. I'm going to be teaming up with the Barbarians with Epirus on this side. We are attacking Carthage, Seleu Seleucids, and Macedon, and Sparta. Jeez, I just now realized these factions are really strong. Those are some really powerful factions. We'll see how this plays out. Now, just uh, I, I am going to be focusing on my gameplay specifically because I do want to show off the Romans here. So in terms of my army comp, uh, let me do normal speed here. But just keep in mind, there's a big attack going on here with the Barbarians. Uh, and the defenders kind of let up a little bit in this open area. And, you know, I love Carthage, the city, because it, most of the time it's do or die in this area right here because when you fall back to the town center right here at times you're at a disadvantage because of the cliffs over here which i'm not a fan of that i mean i wish the town center zones were kind of more like up here or something it just kind of stinks you know as a defender that you fall back to a weaker position so most of the time you see players give it their all over on this side and try to hold with everything or they'll fall back when they know they've killed most of the attackers archers or whatever so anyways looking at back to what i was saying my roman army cop i have hastati hastati are a great uh early unit for rome they're not the power most powerful but relative to other swordsmen they're pretty dang good they're pretty awesome and also don't forget guys they have pila so i'm using them to push up the towers the equipment I had a mini panic attack here because as soon as my ram was getting into position, I was like, teammate, no, teammate, get out of the way. So I just dropped it. I dropped the ram, but look, he's still coming. This I was like, no, no. Oh, it was so close, so close. But he's, uh, you know, it's probably the pathfinding was telling him to go that way. And again, I do apologize for the lagginess. It is a 4v4, so it's going to get pretty wild. So now that that's all cleared up, I'm just going to storm on in and uh, prepare my troops. And my Hastati are going to lead the way. And there they go. Most of them are on these towers here. And this is my entrance. Now over on this way, it looks like Arverni has started to attack the Seleucids. So it's uh, Thorax Swordsmen versus, what do we got here? These uh, Celtic? Yeah, Celtic Warriors. Got more Celtic Warriors against Thorough Spears. So the fight has begun. And Arverni is leading the way with Galatia. And here we go. Now my forces are in position. And check this out, guys. Let's always remember the infantry for Rome is very powerful. But you got to make sure you use them to their fullest potential. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to use the Pila right there. And then I'm going to call off the attack. I'm going to sit rare. I'm, I'm actually going to fall back and set up a recharge there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and form up and charge it again. And repeat. Uh, no, they were a little late there. I that wasn't a. And again, I'm just you know, these these all these factions you see defending. They're heavy hoplite factions. They're heavy um defensive, uh units uh, focused factions. You know. So there we go. There's another Pila. Look at that. 
just really soften them up and I used up all the ammo of the Hustati and I know this is just militia hoplites it's not the the greatest of units uh, but still we're gonna chip away at them we're gonna severely weaken them and that's gonna help this Hustati unit break in a little bit faster uh, back over up here we are taking on Macedon with his thorax swords unfortunately this is a bit of a blunder on my part my Hastati have nowhere to go. Uh, they can't go this way because obviously the wall is destroyed. So these three units of Hastati are going to have to fight their way out of this. But they're also getting shot by the arrows. And I believe the, they were getting shot by these the uh, archers over here. Yeah, shot by the arrows. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, so that wasn't a big deal because, again, this is why I send in the... Oh, here's a little... Look at that little column push. Column push with my Hastati, and I get these throw spears off guard. So always, always look for these opportunities. And then I decide to just turn the table here and go for the militia to quickly break them and to free up. You see how I'm fighting on both sides here? It's actually pretty cool. So that's going to quickly break the militia hoplites. And that's going to free them up. Man, this is kind of really laggy. I, I'm not sure why. I mean, it's a 4v4, but seems extra laggy uh but yeah the hasadi are about to break through and now we're gonna clash forces over here on this side where we have some throw spears forming a defensive line for macedon this is good because if i can eventually break through here i'll be able to flank with my hasadi we also have epirus who's putting pressure on this flank and then if we go back over to uh the barbarian side here <laughs> this uh arverni and galatia they're still kind of fighting in the same spot and Galatia seems to be doing a more slow passive approach which is fine by me because he's keeping the Carthaginians uh, occupied he does have some forces over here who are uh, fighting against these Carthaginian hoplites there we go now we do have a unit of Cav who's sallying out good on Seleucids trying to get aggressive uh, I did bring some Cav I did bring some Cav so I uh, You'll probably see them in action soon. But yeah, in terms of my army, it's a wave army. So uh, my first wave is Hastati. They're doing great. So I am in no rush to send in my my next wave, which is my Principes. Or Principes. Uh, they, I think I have four of them. And they're just kind of slowly moving up, getting ready to support the team, getting ready to uh, support the Hastati. But so far right now, the Hastati are doing great. I mean, look at them. Look at these guys. So this unit right here, has 95 kills already sure most of those kills are against militia troop but it doesn't matter they're racking up kills that's all that counts over here this Hastati has 42 but they just entered the game enter the battle so uh so far so good in this crazy crazy fight now remember how i made a blunder here here comes the the arrows the archers just opening fire on my flank again not a big deal this is what hastati's made for they're expendable they're young soldiers not a lot of experience <laughs> not a lot of super expensive equipment uh but yeah uh they're gonna absorb that ammo it's better they absorb it than say my legionaries uh so yeah they're just kind of chilling i have another unit way back here and that is because i didn't want them to get exhausted fighting over here so i'm just letting them rest because they're just kind of stuck there and uh yeah we're just kind of slowly slowly carving our way out of this fight now just kind of zooming out you can see i'm finally sending over uh, my legionary cav i think i have two units of legionary cav yeah two units so they're gonna go over here and help our teammates because we still have a, what is this medium yeah a median cav uh that is uh moving around not medium <laughs> but it's moving around killing these archers i think the glacians just did not see this so this is a very dangerous situation because obviously archers are so important so they're gonna break away because we do have our verney scaring them off with their cav glacia sending in their general to scare them off as well I'm not going to catch up to them, but I'm just going to have one unit of cav. I'm sending the other unit back just in case I need them elsewhere. It's always good to have your units uh, positioned in, in in different formations or positions that will give you opportunities to quickly strike or quickly defend. And we're still fighting the good fight over here. So it's starting to get to that point where, okay, my Hastati are getting chewed up here. 
Uh, they're really getting torn up. Uh, I actually have one unit that's breaking. It might be time to start sending in reinforcements. And that's what, I, uh, that's what I'm doing right here. I'm setting up my uh, principes. They are going to get into the city walls very soon. Uh, but this is a problem. Uh, but thankfully, th there's some chosen swordsmen kind of watching that flank. And if he does try to wrap around like this, he will uh, he will get destroyed. Thanks to the chosen uh, swordsmen. But this is what I do here. This unit still has ammo. And this is a thorough spears. They're pretty good. So since this barbarian use unit is fighting these spears, I decided, you know what? Let me just line my guys up here. And I'm going to throw. Oh, and I'm I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop right here and do it again And you see that like, you know, I, I'm really taking my time here. I'm not just leaving them in the fight I saw an opportunity. Hey, they're just standing there. There's some barbarians who can hold the line I'm gonna throw in some ammo and go in for a charge and that's all my ammo and this unit now has a hundred kills So really trying to use my Hastati as as efficiently as possible even though they're a weak troop relatively speaking compared to their you know their peers i suppose you know the other roster uh you know they still are very good against the enemy enemy forces and i'm i don't want to just throw them away here we go i think we got some uh principes over here principes uh they are actually i think i decided to move them over this way because i was getting a little concerned um, you know, Arverni's been helping me out on my flank. I wanted to return the favor and send some support to him as well. I'm um, actually at this point of the battle, I haven't sent over. I thought I was, but I'm just, I put them in the, kind of in the middle here in case, you know, if they are needed up this way, they can, or if they're needed this way, they can go that way. Again, positioning is key here in these battles. It's all about position your troops so you can get them in the right spot as quickly as possible whether you need to attack or defend and then now i'm flanking with my troops because i defeated those thorough spears the flank ex is exposed for these militia hoplite i'm going to come over and help my teammates and try to get them uh you know his forces through and you can see now the spartans have reorganized their lines and this is the next defensive line and they are throwing some some ammo from the thorough spears again the, this is what Hastati are for. They absorb ammo. This is what they're for, and it's perfect. Like I said, you don't want your legionaries being killed from Thoreau Spears when your, your Hastati can absorb all that ammo. We're still tragically fighting up here. I was really frustrated because I still have so much fresh Hastati ready to fight they haven't seen any action yet keep in mind this is my first wave you know quote unquote i say quote unquote wave because you shouldn't really attack in waves i'm not necessarily attacking in waves i'm more it's a it's a more of a steady stream is what it is you know so anyway i just don't want to get you guys confused on that but since i won over here cleared this pathway i'm gonna take these hastati and send them up behind and that's what i'm doing here just to free up the other Hastati that are stuck on this wall. So yeah, uh, it's uh, this could have been a lot worse. I mean, we lost some some men here. They only have 26 kills, but they lost a huge chunk of troops because of the archer fire. But at the same time, they absorbed a ton of ammo from the defenders. And now we got to fight through these stubborn Spartans, which is going to be quite the challenge. Okay, here we go. I think, yes, I did commit a unit of Princapes into this fight. Uh, just trying to help my ally get a little bit of an edge. Like I said, Arverni's been helping me. I want to help them against the Seleucids. So I've sent in the, the Princapes. We also have Glacia who's storming in. It's looking very promising over here as, um, you know, as the Carthaginians are starting to break. It looks like we're going to take control of this, uh, this first initial wall. We have African pikemen. This is a problem. But it's actually it's actually a really good sight to see pikemen from the defenders so early on. You know, usually people save the pikemen for the very end of the battle, but to see them so early here is uh is pretty awesome cuz that that means we could eventually focus our archer fire on them. Uh we could, you know, move up infantry and throw pila at them. 
It's really good. Really, really good. It's it's so much better to take out pikemen early than late. That is for sure. All right, here we go. Uh, we're storming around. We made some progress here. And our Verney is going to go ahead and start pushing here. Because if we can break through here, we can get behind all this hoplites and stuff. Uh, Epirus is going to go ahead and storm in with his troops. It looks like he has a lot of Illyrian levies and whatnot. On this side, I am finally breaking these Thorax swords who killed 139 of my Hastati. And even the Relief Force Hastati, the one I sent up to flank, they are breaking as well. So, finally, finally we're getting through that. I still have my two units of prin uh, Principes. Remember, I had four total. Uh, and my, my third wave, quote-unquote, is the... Not the veteran legion. It's the legionary cohort. No. Yeah. The veteran legionaries. Yeah, the veteran legionaries is like my final bet. This is the best unit I'm bringing infantry wise. So technically these two units is the third wave. And then this will be my fourth and final wave. Again, being very... It's a battle of attrition. I don't need more troops in the battle right now. Everything's kind of set. Everything's getting attacked right now. We got our Verney going in here. We have Galatia. I'm going this way. Uh, we've got, you know, my Hastati over here. Uh, I guess I could send some forces, but again, Epirus has got that under control. So there's really no need to rush these guys in. They're in position where I can quickly run them in if I need to. Uh, but there's really no need to, uh, you know, panic and just spam them in. And you know, they're going to get shot at by arrows or something. Now over here, I've got Cav storming in, looking for an opportunity. Unfortunately, it's it looks like I'm going for the pikes, but I turn. And I'm going to hit the rear of these Carthaginian hoplites who are holding back my... Uh, principes so this is why it's huge guys always try to bring one or two units of cav in a siege battle because you never know when you get a great opportunity just like that and we quickly break the hoplites where they could have held so much longer uh, i was trying to rush you see that i'm rushing the pikes before they can properly uh, set up unfortunately they do properly set up i'm just gonna disengage even though they're looking the wrong way i wonder if i still could have attacked them but uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my Pila here, <clears throat> and I also, guys, I also have the arrow towers supporting me, which is gonna chip away at their numbers. There it is. There, there's the Pila. Oh yeah, watch them drop. It really wasn't too bad though. They still have over a hundred. And again, I'm just playing a cat and mouse game. We have some horse archers running around, so I've sent my uh, my horses after them, just kind of supporting my allies, trying to clean up their cab as best as possible look at this guys my hastati they have made it and i feel so good at this point of the battle because we've been fighting for a long time and i still have my first wave in very healthy conditions now keep in mind my teammates have been doing an amazing uh, amazing job they have committed a lot of forces in this fight and they you know they've been softening up and weakening the uh, the enemy units where it's really helping my army kind of gradually go in and you know take my time line up my uh, pila throws everything like that so my teammates are doing a great job uh, but it's getting to the point where, you know, we're starting to see some wear and tear on the Arverni forces. You can see Arverni's per pretty weak here. Galatia is starting to run out of troops. So I really need to put the pedal to the metal and just kind of reinforce different locations of where my teammates are. You can see I'm sending more uh, Principes over this way to support this side of the fight. Now, this is a big problem right here. Look at all these archers. We got to watch out for that. Now... <sighs> We're just trying to find a position to break through. Any flank, we're going to take it. Any possible flank, we're going to go for it. Uh, so we're just, like I said, we're just going to attack on all sides here. And just try to poke a hole through this defense. And just like a dam holding back water, if there's a tiny hole, it can begin to crack. And that water starts rushing through. And with that water rushing through, you can... You know, weaken the structure. That's my metaphor for today. And there we go. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to do the same thing, guys. These defenders, they're going to sit here and just watch my troops move forward. Then I'm just going to load up on my uh, my Pila and keep it going. Here comes another wave. Another volley. 
Oh, yes. And then I'm gonna fully commit because I'm out of ammo. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I think I have a tiny a bit of ammo left. Usually it's like two good throws, but sometimes not every soldier throws. So you'll have, or do I have three? Yeah, you see, there was only a couple that went. And after that, my troops are fresh. His are fresh, but they've taken a considerable amount of casualties. But it's nothing too crazy. But again, every little advantage you can get in siege battles, you must take. Uh, Rome versus... Well, these aren't Carthaginians, but close enough. Rome in Carthage. It's always a good sight. All right, so back over here, uh, we've got a weird situation. I just put my men in Testudo. They're getting shot by... They were getting shot by these archers over here, by the arrow tower. I'm just leaving my men here just to make sure I'm protecting my allies' flank and they don't come over this way. And, uh, you know, they're in Testudo to protect them from the arrow fire. Look at all my Hostati, fresh, ready to go. This unit hasn't seen any action. They've killed one person, but they've lost two men. So, uh, not a great uh, KD, but they can quickly change that around. And I am starting to move up my um, my Hastati to support Epirus. I'm just kind of, right now, just, again, I have the luxury. Thanks to my teammates who are doing an amazing job. They're giving me the luxury of being able to find and, you know, poke and jab at soft spots in the defense and look for weaknesses. So far, there's no weakness here. I kind of looked over here. I was like, well, maybe I can go here and just kind of throw some, some peel at them. So we'll see how that plays out. Over on this side, I'm seeing Epirus is kind of softening up. You can see he, he doesn't have a lot of troops here attacking. And I want to keep the defenders honest here. So I moved over uh, some of the last two units of, of prin prin uh, Princapes. I, oh, another thing, guys. Another thing. So... I noticed that all these defending factions are all Greek or similar to Greek uh, factions where they have a lot of pikemen. So I have been holding on to my archers this whole time. And that's the other thing that I felt so confident about this battle is that, hey, I haven't used a single arrow. Uh, so this is really good. You know, once we get to the, uh, the, the pikemen and everything, we're going to move up our infantry. And here we go. Yes, I've moved up my, my Hastati. There's a big section of these Greeks that are exposed. Ooh. Yes. Now, they are heavily armored, but we do chip away at them. We're softening up this line. And I'm just going to sit here and use up all my ammo. We also have the arrow towers who are supporting us as well that we captured. And look at this. The Greeks just throwing in some hoplites to hold that flank. My prin uh, principes are still fighting. Over here, I broke a uh, formation. Oh, that it got a little bit of taste of my own medicine there. But that's okay. These princ uh, principes. I, 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 how do you pronounce uh, principes? I've heard principes and principes. Whatever. The the P boys. Uh, <laughs> that's not a good name either. Uh, they're just holding back these thorax swords. It's not looking good. I'm definitely going to need support here. And you can see that they are kind of tasting a weakness in our in our setup here. Where if they break through my Romans, they can flank the uh, legionaries, the Galatian legionaries. So we might want to send up reinforcements up there. And I do have a unit of Hastati who are making their way. I also have some Cav. Check this out, guys. I saw that their archers are exposed. And I think what I'm going to do here... Is fake like I'm gonna go for the archers and then I'm gonna turn and hit the infantry. I already did this earlier in this battle. We're gonna do it again. And yeah, they charge into the wall instead of the unit. So that was awesome. Well, this is good. This is disrupting their formation. This is a very healthy unit to have them flanked like that. That is really awesome. But of course, the Spartans are sending in reinforcements. Spartans are just everywhere right now. And because of that, I'm going to get my cav out of there. So I'm just going to run back into the breach. Through the breach. And they're going to they're gonna back off as well. So good on Spartans. Uh, you know, the Spartans trying to protect their ally. This is really good. Uh, we have broken through these spears. Uh, unfortunately, there's some Thorax swordsmen waiting right behind them. 
but we're just gonna keep moving time is against us we don't we don't have the luxury of sitting back and and doing nothing and uh, I'm also attacking on this flank this is my Hastati taking on these Spartan hoplites I see this tiny opportunity oh wait am I going up oh that's right okay so I noticed there's this nice little section of wall that you can look down and see the Spartans and these guys have Pila I think they have full Pila and this is also a depleted unit but that's okay they're gonna get up here they don't need to be a strong force you know they just need to get up here and throw and they are just throwing guys in a good way look at this look at this shot right here so awesome So they're throwing down, getting those uh, Spartans. I think they used up most of their ammo. No, they're still going. But again, see, I'm using everything I have at my disposal. I'm using every ability of all these units. And Epirus is on the verge of breaking through. But Sparta is sending in reinforcements. And I notice we have Royal Peltus. This is the general for Macedon and when you see a general run to the front line that means they're running out of troops that's a really good sign yeah there goes there goes Sparta to reinforce I'm really surprised I would have backed if I was the defenders I would have backed away just because you have the arrow tower putting pressure on you you got flanked units over here oh there it is there it is he called it he's like nope this is a losing fight we're gonna retreat I've got the rest of my reinforcements going in. Um, my Romans over here, amazingly, are still holding. Look at this thin line. We got 205 kills. These guys are nasty. The Prinkapes. The P-Boys. <laughs> here comes the Barbs coming to reinforce us. You know, like they're like, you know, you Romans aren't too bad. Thanks. But you're still a barbarian. <laughs> uh, so over here we got another sally out look at this Carthage I think this is like his second sally out so I sent in everything I got cav wise to uh, support my ally I didn't want my ally to lose his general right after killing him I saw in the corner of my eye oh archers look at this unprotected archers let's bring in the cav my cab has done great. They've got 34 kills, but those are 34 quality kills, and they are about to rack up a lot more kills. And look at this. My ally is joining the fun as he flanks from the rear. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And also, okay, we kind of missed it, but I sent a unit of infantry through this opening, around through this opening, and they are flanking the Spartans, but tragically, this unit is so small that... They're not really putting too much of a threat on this Spartan Hoplite unit. I have moved up some Legionary Cohort. So these guys are ready to go. They're kind of in the mix here. There is some just fighting. What is going on? It says there's Spartans here. I get. Oh, yeah, I see. Just weird. Okay, so we have the Seleucid and Spartan uh, units holding us back here. But my cohort are in the fight. Over here, oh, yep, we broke through. Now, because they have fallen back here, they've also fallen back from here. And at this point, my Hastati are pretty much out of the game. So I'm just kind of throwing them in. They're not going to win this fight, but they're going to exhaust the Spartans and the defenders here. So my units can uh, can push in, like the, the healthier units, the stronger units can push in and fight a tired or more tired uh, defense unit. And in being careful, I'm not just throwing in all of my units. I'm just kind of, you know, taking my time. I've got this unit set up, waiting to go in. Uh, over here, we've got some more Hastati. I have some uh, Principes fighting on this side. Doing a great job. We are getting uh, pelted by the Royal Peltis. And it hurts. And we also have arrows coming down as well. Oof, that stung. So, I decide to hold back because I think these Princa the Principes have ammo. 
So I'm gonna set him up here. Oh no! I just hold. I, I forget exactly what I'm doing here. I just put all my units in. Okay, because I'm just getting shot at. I think the logic here was like, okay, whatever. Let them shoot at me and waste their ammo on my infantry. That's fine by me. I've now started to just send up my archers to support uh, the battle and uh, kill enemy archers. Oh, this is why. There's elephants. <laughs> We've got elephants. They have eight kills already. They're running out. It looks like they're going for my cav. I'm not going to fight that. I'm like, okay, elephants can sally out and try to catch my cab, but they're going to be way too slow. But the player does something really genius here. It's that it looks like he's going for my cab, but he's actually going to do the opposite of what I did. He's going to run through this, um, this flank here. And I, I knew it was coming. I was like, oh, this is a problem. So I was desperately trying to get my archers on this wall up here. Because obviously elephants can't go on the wall. But my archers were not listening. I think they were still trying to attack the elephants, but oh god. Yeah, here they come. So yeah, I'm I'm manually telling the archers to run to these stairs over here. And again, sorry for the lag, guys. It's just a really big battle. There's a lot of dead troops laying around at this point. And I've got my two units of legionary cohort fighting off the, uh, not the Romans, the Spartans. My infantry is still fighting over here. I've committed my forces back into the fight. It looks like this is actually a fresh unit of uh, Prince Principes. They only have 14 kills, 15 kills. Oh! Dude, they just killed him right in front of you. You're going to let that happen? Look at this royal Peltis. He's just standing over the man he killed. You're going to let this man kill one of your brothers in arms? Look at this. This is actually pretty cool. He's like, he's like, back you invaders, back. Uh-oh. He's still just standing here like a lad. Wait. I'm so confused. There he goes. I was like, is this a teammate? Like, what's happening? Oh, now they moved up Pikeman. This guy, he's like, all right, fine. I'll get back into position. Oh, my God. I think we might have a life of a soldier with that guy. That's that's pretty cool. We got to find out. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but, yeah, he moved up Pikeman. This is, you know, classic me using my, my peel up to try to uh, soften them up. Looks like he's got a couple men stuck there, but he, he's going to make it out. Quick march. Um, my allies are sending in some units to help over at the stair center area. God, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my god, Carthage still has some late Libyan hoplites over here. And the fight is not going well. Look at this, the legionary cohort. And check this out, the elephants are coming in. They are coming in, and they are healthy. They already have 231 kills. They've been killing archers out here. It's been really tragic. My archers are getting the heck out of dodge. I see that my ally sends in some uh, infantry to, to kind of tie up the, the elephants. He also has the same idea as getting his Syrian uh, archers up here, and they are going to fire at the elephants as well. I think I've got mine firing as well. Wait, where did my archers go? Oh, yeah, they're right there. I saw that the elephants were no longer chasing. Yeah. And there we go. That causes them to run amok. Which, it doesn't help us too much because they're running amok in enemy forces. But uh, they are starting to get to the point where they are dropping. And there you have it. We're just going to keep firing at them. 315 kills is not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. So clearly, whenever... Okay, so now that the elephants are gone, that was probably a huge part of their defense. I think they were really counting on those elephants, which they did do a good job, but it just wasn't enough. There we go. Throwing some Pila. And I'm just going to charge right in. We got some Thorax Swords. You always want to be hot on the heels of your your enemies when they're falling back you never want them to fall back and reform 
at their own pace. You want to put some pressure on them. You want to always be right behind them. That way, if a unit gets a little lost or out of formation or, you know, he forgets about a unit, you could quickly go in and, uh, you know, kill him or stop him from being able to retreat. Now we've got pikemen moving up. Thorax pikemen, not going to fight him. Nope. See, this is like the only weakness that the Romans have is that they don't have pikes. They can't bring pikes, but they are more than capable of dealing with the pikemen. They have their own pila. They have archers. So I'm just going to nope my way out of there and move up my archers. And the archers are going to release hell. And look, they only have six kills. They've been they've been shot out a little bit by the enemy archers, but that's okay. You don't need a full full unit, like a full healthy unit of archers to be effective. You just need at least half, even less. I mean, they have so much ammo, they could just sit there and shoot, you know? It's not like you need numbers with archers. The only time you need numbers with archers is when you're taking on enemy archers in a, in a skirmish, in a shootout. But yeah, you can see my ally moved up his Cretan archers as well. That's going to be double trouble. And we're just focusing them down. Going to leave your pikemen there? Well, we're going to shoot them. And they're dropping. They're at 126. You can see the arrows are just missing them. Uh, but yeah, we're just kind of skirmishing them down. We got more pikemen over here. We've broken through the center. And this is a big flank right here. Because if our teammates can get in, then they can rush this way. Well, that, that arrow is a little bad. They can rush this way and get behind this general with 220 kills. He's been putting up a great fight. But my Roman infantry is fighting their way, hacking and slashing. We still have some Spartans here as well with 89 kills. And then we have some late Libyan hoplites who's watching the flank, it looks like. Oh, yeah, from this breach point. Because I have some infantry over here looking to flank around. See, always make the defenders look around and pen. And they see, as soon as I saw that they committed, I was like, okay, time to go in. Unfortunately, my Romans are breaking here, but that's fine. Reinforcements are on the way. And oh yeah, Seleucids are breaking. That just leaves the late Libyan hoplites. And I think they're going to try to get the heck out of Dodge. Yep. I was like, no, you're not going anywhere. We surround them. These guys are royally screwed. And now my army's moving up. And you can see that, uh, you know, I still have some archers that I didn't use. I got a general. Uh, most of my infantry has kind of been committed. or f no, Actually, no. My veteran legionaries have not seen any action. That is the luxury of being a veteran. Uh, we're going to go ahead and send them around. Uh, just because, to, you know, we want to get them going. Actually, never mind. I see an opportunity to get behind these Carthaginians. So I'm going to go this way and cut them off. And that's, like I said, be aggressive. As soon as you see the enemy falling back, push around. Push forward. Look and cut off retreats. You cut off retreats, you're going to win. You're going to win. And just like that, a huge break from the defenders as they are starting to run out of troops. We got pikemen in the front here. Not going to do anything against that. Not going to charge them. Uh, just going to sit here and shoot at them good move from the player oh they're routing i was gonna say good move getting them out of there that's the thing though with pike see that's the challenge like with pikemen if you only have pikemen for your final stand it's not gonna go well the pikemen need supportive units they need archers they need other infantry to help them because they're so easy to pick off with archers you know uh so yeah there we go big break right there big old break and that right there, guys, is the battle. So, in a nutshell, how did I win this battle? Great team teammates. Really great teammates. Great teamwork. I kind of came in as more of a support player where I could kind of pick and choose my battles. Where we had Epirus kind of focus the fight here. We had Arverni focus the fight here and Galatia over here. And that gave me, it's not like we organized this, it just happened this way. It gave me the opportunity to kind of, okay, send a unit here, sit back, you know, let, let Epirus go in a little bit, look for a weakness, use my javis. 
Uh, oh, used up my javis, charging my infantry. So yeah, it gave me a lot of options and just, you know, that's uh, bottom line. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are at this game. If you don't have any sort of teamwork, you're not going to win. It's all about the teamwork in these, you know, multiple player siege battles. Uh, so this one's over. It's just the general just didn't want to give up. All right, there you got it. Uh, there you got it. There you have it. The battle's over. I, the general just broke over here. Look at right before he got charged. <laughs> he broke. So let's end the replay. Look at the results. So very good job by Arverni. I think he got the most kills, 2,124. I got the second most, 19,035. Uh, and great job by the teammates. Uh, they all, you know, pulled their weight. A, gr a really really awesome fight and um i don't know i just really enjoyed that one it was such a fight like just you know between both forces just just everything they got fighting for those those walls of carthage it was really cool so i enjoyed this one a lot hopefully this gave you some cool rome gameplay because i know every almost every time i upload a battle with rome the player seems to be a little bit newer again i'm not the best at the game but I thought I did pretty well there. I could have done better in certain ways. But look at this. I mean, my Hastati killed it. 191, 155, 79, 94, 93. And they all survived the battle heavily wounded. This one's more than half. Um, my Principes did amazing as well. So it's just, a, just that deadly infantry. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for joining me on the battlefield. This was a lot of fun. Remember, guys, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and, of course, share the video. It's free advertisement for me. And, you know, if you like my videos and you think someone else will like it, share it to them. I do appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time on the battlefield.